Hello everyone, and um, today I wanted to speak about um, the real shade of feminism. Um, well, this is a topic I think we all are familiar with. We all know what feminism is. And uh, so how, how much can one really go into that? How deep can one go into that? I believe we all have uh, mixed opinions and uh, perspectives when we think of feminism per se, mainly because of how, like most causes, you know, like everything started out with a purpose, obviously. So feminism, the, the concept of feminism um, obviously came out for a much different reason than what it is, than how it is perceived here in our modern world. You see, um, feminism is something that stands up for the rights, the freedom of women who are not allowed to be independent, be, um, you know, and are not victims of abuse, harmed in any way. It's a sense of protection to, to bring on the uh, reminder to this world that women are important in this world as daughters, sisters, mothers, grandmothers. And um, so obviously the entire cause as to how feminism came about in this world has evolved greatly. And from my perspective, I do not believe as a woman that the feminism today um, is really attracting the similar vibration as it did when it first started off. If we remember, uh, we go back to our history, we understand that the way women lived back then in other eras as opposed to the one we are in right now was much different in a lot of ways because as a civilization we have obviously evolved and uh, women are not exempted from it we have evolved in our own ways um, but you see when we go back really way back into the times of tribes where women were respected for their wisdom where the more a woman ages, she even becomes the head of a family or a community. There are still communities in India uh, where women are the decision makers, where women have a stronger control over situations. And it's not on the basis of feminism, actually, but in the basis that women can, can, can contain a wisdom that comes from the way they are. Women are generally more graceful, more outspoken than men. Um, their perception of everything is different. But as we evolved, I feel that, you know, we as women have started to look at things differently, very differently. Feminism now has a much bigger list. At one point, feminism was an, an active uh, cause which supported and helped women who were suffering from maybe domestic violence, any kind of abuse. You know, that was why the, the, the need to bring back the, the respect needed to women need was raised back then. Now, if we look at the feminism now, it has become largely exploited. And I'm a woman myself, so I am openly claiming this because from what I see around me, I do notice that a lot of, you know, a lot of convenience, convenience has been incorporated into this course much like a lot of things, you know, and in our world, much like a lot of things, everything uh, after a point of time evolves into something that is more convenient, whether you uh, look at religion or, or any kind of uh, a growth 
in any area in life, um, from our educational systems to the way we function as independent cultures, um, the diversity, everything. Everything evolves based on convenience after a point of time. But causes, causes, I feel, should should evolve as well but you know it shouldn't be one that becomes convenient to um, add just throw just about anything into it when we look at feminism the respect a woman is given in a community in a household um, well the modern women um, me included we work, um, so we bring food to the table, we raise our children, we uh, are pretty much capable of making as many decisions as a man can. So sometimes we tend to feel much more independent than, uh, than the, our predecessors, you know, like women of our great grandmothers and, you know, our, our ancestors because we are given so much more opportunities uh, we are capable of handling more um, and the thing is there is a sense of determination and strength that we have seen in the modern women that was not really there because of societal pressures and community pressures and even among families um, and even their own insecurities which did not allow them to explore as much as the modern women did would do now and back then, those restrictions held them back. But right now, it's a different world. It's a much more evolved and modern world where uh, women are accomplishing so much more from becoming political leaders to, um, you know, becoming amazing mothers who raise amazing children. It, there's so many things that we accomplish, professional goals, personal goals. You know, it's, it's, it's limitless. But the thing is, you know, when it comes to fighting for it, when we talk about the word feminism, what really, def what, what does it entail? What is feminism? Is it a drive to ensure women who are not um, in a space where they're allowed to explore their best abilities, their wisdom, their sense of uh, grace, their safety is it, is it are these more important than to bring feminism into lifestyles so if you look at it now when women actually um, incorporate feminism into things like you know well I can dress any way I want I can even walk naked on, on the street and you know that is my freedom that is my my um, right so I'm not saying that walking naked on the street is wrong but if it is part of your culture if that was how you were raised and women in your in men and your community and everyone accepted that and were able to uh, be raised in an environment where people tend to not give as much uh, importance to your body but more importance to who you are as a complete being now in tribes there are tribes across the world and uh, where, where they still believe that you know you don't have to cover yourself up you know and they are they have that culture that accepts that as a norm and they don't have to fight for it all right they don't have to fight for it they don't have to uh, incorporate so-called feminism into it they are not looked at in such a way where they feel like they're being disrespected so that is an environment that is fit for it but when it comes to the modern world like if you're living say in the middle of New York City or in the middle of one of the major cities in the world where walking naked is not something of a norm because there are there's a totally different form of mental makeup that is ingrained into the society which does not mean that they disrespect you if you were to walk naked but that it is not required 
and your purpose is therefore questioned. Why does she have to remove her clothes? What is she trying to prove? Is she trying to enforce that we have to accept her without clothes in order to see past it when you could just be covered from head to toe and your personality will still come through? So there are a lot of questions that are being raised and I felt like talking about this today is important because when we look at two sides of a coin and not always one side of a coin, it, it brings in a lot of things. You see, when women keep arguing about, you know, let's say violence against women has increased in our generation. It has across the world, especially in countries like India where they actually have what is called a rape culture. So it's like they were being teased and mocked for the rape culture. Now, if you look at the women in India, I am not saying that women should dress in a certain way, like, you know, it, but it has been taken offensively. It has been taken offensively because the primary mental acceptance of what is all right, and what is not, and respecting others for their emotions, for their opinions, for their views, it has not been graceful at all. Men, with all due respect, it is a world, whether you're a man or woman, physical appearance has become like an obsession uh, thanks to the internet now. You know, it has become an, an, an obsession because of all the trends. So feminism has evolved into a trending cause. The real cause behind it has been you know, uh, camouflaged under the, the, the evolved one, which is more of a, um, a trending one. So women are fighting to evolve when it's not really something that comes from a place of peace. Do you understand? See, when you are asking for something, when you're saying, for instance, you're saying, no, I want to dress as I wish to, I want to be given absolute freedom to be as I want to, but I don't want to face any consequences because I believe I have the right simply because I'm a woman. You get the point? Under those circumstances, a man can say, which again, you know, the moment a man comes up and says, well, you know, I am not generally always exposed to a woman without clothes or in tight clothes. I'm not. But it does not mean I don't respect them. I do respect them. But it's human nature to be tempted in a certain way when you're dressed in a certain way. Because that's the culture. That's what they see. So that's how they perceive it. The entire world tends to mostly perceive appearance as an important or a byproduct of, you know, being attracted to the opposite sex. So how can you, at this point, bring feminism into you know, crossing boundaries as to how you appear and your rights as a woman in, in feminism when, when it has not been openly accepted in your culture, in your environment, in your community, in the, you know, even probably in your family, if you are dressed in a way that, you know, sends out signals of another nature. It's not about crying foul every time somebody looks at you in a way that is conventional, whereas you are trying to step out of the conventional and demanding that everyone suddenly accepts you for whatever you do. In that right, if you look at it in that point of view, then it looks perfectly fine for anybody to just do anything in this world, including crimes like murder and claiming that they were you know, they're being judged for the actions. So feminism is not about clothes. It's not about how you, you, you want to be on the outside. It is about attending to those who are truly suffering from any kind of physical or mental harm, from toxic relationships or any kind of abuse. Those kind of women l lack the strength in them and they are the ones who need help 
they're the ones who need people to step in and bring in that integrity back through a cause. And that is what feminism has been for. If you wish to walk around naked 24 seven and be accepted, or if you wish to um, perhaps appear as someone who is very casual socially, um, and you feel that people are not able to take them seriously, the reason why you're not taken seriously because everything falls into a label in this world. It's, a, it's got a label, you know? Like if you're very socially casual, when you have multiple partners, for instance, it means that you are not someone who's serious. You don't appear so. And that cannot be classified as human, uh, a woman's right to be as she wants to be. But that also doesn't give the right for any man to think that way. So we are in a very restless, you know, uh, era where opinions can, can, can fluctuate in any direction. But there has to be a reminder somewhere that we can relate to and remind ourselves not just for ourselves, but to raise up the real value behind a cause like feminism, where F domestic abuse where where abuse against women and children are still rampant in this world so we should look at the roots of the cause and not the frills of it it looks great on the outside if you keep arguing about you know I need to be able to do this and that and a man does not have a right to say this or people cannot judge me based on how I look or they don't look with or without makeup with or without clothes well that does not make you a woman that is just the the physical makeup of a woman what makes you a woman is someone who has integrity someone who believes that you need to be respected and it's like you need to understand and gracefully navigate through the environment the people knowing that you in turn need to respect others that there is what a woman is because you are a daughter, you are a sister, you are a mother. We bring life into this world. So every woman is sacred. I've had many incarnations where I remember that, you know, it was a completely different time. And, you know, but when I look back at it now and compare the life that I have now as opposed to then, right now I feel, un I feel pressurized to be so much more. I feel pressurized to go out there and work. I'm pressurized to multitask. I'm pressurized to um, raise my kids in a certain way while I'm still, you know, accomplishing different things in my, in my career, in my business. So there's so much of pressure the modern woman faces because we keep uh, pushing each other to ends where we don't really need to go sometimes. It is not a race. We have evolved into women who have been pressurizing one another into a race, which we think is how we go about claiming our rights as women. And that is not where it is. It's not where it is at. Back then, I remember in my incarnations where I had to basically ensure that my family was taken care of. All right, where the husband goes out and he does what he has to do, where he takes care of providing for the family, taking care of his business. And my responsibility as a partner was to ensure that our offspring were fed, our offspring were taken care of, that he was taken care of, that I was taken care of, that we had a home and not a house. I was not in the pressure to, to, to do so much more. And I felt way more respected then than I do feel respected now. Because it was an environment that didn't really feel suffocating just because I did less. But it felt amazing because I was respected for the, for, for the person I was. And mind you, I didn't have to demand to walk around naked and have men uh, respect me nevertheless. I didn't feel the need to um, prove anything physically. I didn't feel any of that was empowering me. 
none of those things empowered me and I don't feel it still empowers me. The only reason why I am who I am today is entirely because I am comfortable with the way I am and I give respect to those who meet me every day as clients or students. I, I respect the work that I do and I think that is the value, that is the empowerment behind feminism and not the convenient trending feminism that is going around the world where women think that they should give top priority to being able to do anything and everything and claiming that as a right against the rest of the world because they feel they have the entitlement for it. So the real shade of feminism today is a trending cause. I wouldn't even call it a cause. It's a trend and not a real cause. So maybe we should start looking at the real shade, which was before all of this happened. We're still here to empower those who don't have a voice and not those who can scream louder than everybody else. Namaste.